Basically, I was trained by the Popo family. I used to live with Randy Savage, uh, Lanny, his father, hell his mother would do my hair, uh, uh, Angelo uh, was there and everything I learned in the wrestling business, probably the first 95% was the first four years in the business I got by staying with him. It's like I worked for the Maritimes for uh, Emile Dupre because Paul Christie, I was working for Dick the Bruiser and the old Sheik and he would book me out to do TVs and stuff. And then I hooked up with Randy. They brought me into Maritimes for Dupre first time. And I, was, I was Hercules Samard. French, I was French Canadian, but I didn't know any words except wee oui, wee, oui, and that was it, you know. So, so I did that, and then Randy booked me down in Nashville for Nick Goulas. Then his father booked me in the Mississippi for Frankie Kane, who was the great Mephisto. And uh, uh, Frankie gave me the name Rip Rogers. Uh, before then, I was my real name, Mark Shirer. Then I was uh, Hercules Samar. Then I was my great idea, the disco kid. Is, uh, it got over like a lead balloon. And then I became Rip Rogers because that was Eddie Graham's uh, wrestling name in Texas in 1955. And uh, uh, Mephisto, Frankie Kane, he said, you remind me of Eddie Graham. I said, holy shit, that's good, right? So uh, I became, and I've been Rip Rogers since uh, uh, basically January 1st, 1979. So how did you run into the Pafos for the first time? Just The, the first time this old carny named Don Pruitt got me booked for Nick Goulas down at like the Christmas Spectacular. Mm -hmm. So I was Lanny Pafos tag team partner. And so Lanny knew who I was. And then Paul Christie was a personal friend of the Pafos for years. And they had worked together a lot, so he told me they was going to go to the Maritimes and whatever, blah, blah, blah. So he gave me Randy's number. So I called Randy up, and uh, we hit it off, and blah, blah, blah. And then over the next four years, he was like my, my best friend, my mentor. I learned editing, booking, dubbing, and all that stuff, just by not by being, just by hanging around. But uh, What was it like living with him? Well, let's just say... There was a lot of holes in the wall, and he taught me how to answer the phone. Where this was before they had caller ID and stuff. So when anybody would call, he'd go, "Hello!" Right away, whoever's talking, he's got them back, backpedaling right away. <laughs> so, oh, that's pretty cool. But he talked about it. Everything was psychological, of how to do this, how to that, and how he'd just stare a hole right through you and everything. And but God, we was a Nick, and we, we'd have a. We'd go out and we'd have no money in our pockets on purpose, but I didn't have any. <laughs> and we would go to the steakhouse and eat the scraps off and spend no money. It was just awesome. Yeah, he was really cheap, wasn't he? Well, you gotta remember, Angelo was born in uh, 1925, so grew up in the Great Depression. They had no running water. They had no electricity. He was an only child and basically they spoke uh, Italian, right? So here he was in this world, so he was determined he was gonna provide. He was determined that his family was not gonna have financial stress. So and he was determined no matter what he made, he was gonna put that money back for them for later. So he's just a hell of a father, a hell of a husband and doing shit the way most people should be doing stuff. You know what I mean? So, and all the time I was so her terrible, he never raised his voice to me. Which I'm a yell and a screamer. But people, see, once they train under me, they know that it's all the rib. Guys are scared to death of the company. See, you're funny or shit. I said, well, yeah, it takes a while to figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, like when you're coaching, some people you can coach, you can talk soft to them, but they don't get it. You yell and scream and cuss at them, they remember that fucking thing the rest of your life. Can I cuss on here or not? Sure. Okay. I, I, I think I, that was my first one that slipped out, but I'm trying to be a good boy. <laughs> so. <laughs> Were you around when he first met Elizabeth? When I, okay, when I, when I was there, Elizabeth worked at Sente Sports Center, this huge uh, complex for training. They had an actual wave pool and everything, and she worked at the front desk taking keys. Like when you come in, she'd take the key and hang it up. And uh, she was a little bit heavy. And uh, Randy and the women didn't get, Randy was, he was like a little boy around women. <laughs> when he would go into character, which the only time I saw him break character in his life was when his little dog died. 
and he just talked about his dog. He said, well, I guess I'll get me another one. You know what I mean? But he had the room and he had the home plate. He had pictures of the dog up and he got his new dog and named it Backup Dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he was, uh, sometimes he would, he would sort of like be a bully, but whatever reasons it was, they were his. He had demons who don't. But he would give you, I think he would give you the shirt off his back. You know what I mean? And uh, if you needed, if he did anything, I think he'd give it to you. You know what I mean? And uh, a lot of my language I learned from him and Ole Anderson doing the finishes. Every other word was the bad word, you know. And I just thought it was normal. And uh, so I looked at him as like my big brother. So anything he did, I emulated. You know what I mean? And I was like little junior. Randy Savage Jr., whatever, not as good, by no means. That's like years ago, I was going to be the first guy in WWE, WWF with the valet gimmick. And then, uh, but he got the gig, it was a total different thing. Like, Elizabeth was a, uh, the first female that was really pushed, you know what I mean? And then they made uh, shitloads of money, tons of money, and whatever. Randy carried me the first how many years of my, of the career, right? Yeah. Never in my life did I see him do a cho anything choreographed. And now I heard, you know, him and Ricky Steamboat had a choreographed match, right? I never seen a WrestleMania thing in my life. I said, no, I ain't no fucking, I don't believe that. And they said, yeah. I said, holy shit, he must have changed. I said, he obviously changed. But I was taught, call it in the ring, and that was it. It just night and day, but I would not believe he had a choreographed match. I would not, because I never, because I had all the matches with him and he's carrying me 40 minutes of need be when I'm horrible. Right. And everything was called in the ring. Did you stay friends with Randy till the end or? Well, uh, we, Randy wanted me in the company, so I came in. Then he wanted me out of the company. Randy was a competitor. I think his dad would dig him when I'd beat him in bodybuilding contests. He'd get on the gas. I wouldn't. Do you see him in that Batman movie how big he was? And when he died, he died from heart issues. His, fa his mother was 90, uh, at least 90 when she passed. Angelo was late 80s, I'm thinking, epitome of health. So you know Randy had always had a size issue. So he was on the gas at least 30, 30 years, you know what I mean? which had to destroy his insides up. And you know, when you do it that long, you're gonna pay the piper. You wish you didn't earlier, uh, but this or that. And then all of a sudden he just started not, uh, the thing was really, and you can hear it right here on Hannibal's TV. Uh, I was married to Brenda. He liked her. We lived together. He went to her, she said, no, he's crazy. We moved in together and we got married, you know what I mean? So then there was tension. I never had any tension before. I was too naive, too green to see it. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.